Okay, we're going to learn about this technique called photo bashing, which is a good way for you to have total control over the images that you generate. So say for example, you want to make an astronaut, but put him in a place that's like the desert or someplace that he doesn't belong. So the best way to do that is to create two separate images and then mash them together. I'm gonna to show how this is done through a simple way on Canva. And then finally, we'll bring it back into Mid Journey to have it generate into something that is more cohesive and more of what you want it to look like. So let's begin. Here I am on Mid Journey. We'll start off by creating a background for this astronaut to be in. We can start by creating the astronaut or the background first, doesn't matter, but let's just do with the background. So I probably wouldn't expect a astronaut to be somewhere in the Himalayan mountains. So let's create something in the Himalayan mountains. So I'll put in landscape photograph of the Himalayan mountains. And then if you want to get more specific, you can, but for our purposes, just want to create a background I'll make it aspect ratio 16 by nine. That way it's wide. You could also do three by one or three by two, a wide photo. Or if you wanted vertical, you could do that too. But for the sake of our example, we'll do something that is wide. And 16 by nine, I like that proportion a lot. It ends up looking pretty cinematic looking and I like my stuff looking cinematic. So we'll do 16 by nine. And as you can see here, it's generating. As it was generating that too, I was thinking maybe we can get a couple other shots as well. So I'll do a up close photo of the Himalayan mountains and its terrain. That way you can like have a couple different shots of where this astronaut is going to be. Like maybe if we want to place them somewhere up more up close versus like a huge expansive landscape. And then also I'm going to generate one where it's like super up close and actually have a subject in the landscape itself and then later we're actually just going to replace that subject with the astronaut so i would i just pasted the other one and then i'll change this up a bit i'll put maybe a man standing in the himalayan mountains he is looking at us and is happy and so as you can see here not all of them are going to come out looking right. Like if we put a subject into this one, it's probably not gonna look too right because it's so zoomed out and like is a drone shot. Whereas the other options that we had, this one as well, landscape, this looks a bit closer because this you have a trail at least and it shows a bit more of a foreground. So that's why I always encourage having many different renditions of a image so then you can get a couple different shots to work with. Now, even here, if you're looking at the man standing on the Himalayan mounts, you actually get something that is more up close and something that's more believable if you put a subject into it. So these ones, so with these ones, if you put a subject in, it's actually gonna look a lot better. Now, I'll probably use one of these and then we're gonna generate a character for it now. So this will be the fun part. We'll go in and generate a profile shot of an astronaut and then I'll do the aspect ratio 16 by nine again, but really this one doesn't matter too much because what is most important is that we can cut out the astronaut and then place it into this scene. So I'll generate a couple as well. So imagine again, astronaut standing in a studio, perfect lighting to illustrate the details of his suit. And then I'll do another one where it's like astronaut Oops. astronaut standing in a standing in front of a simple background with early morning lighting golden hour shot this way it'll come up with like really good lighting that we can possibly use in this one which has pretty decent lighting because it's outside in the Himalayas so this portrait isn't looking at us and I kind of want a shot where the astronaut is looking at us so I'm gonna shift this again and generate another one that is astronaut profile facing us and smiling he has a friendly demeanor now some of this we can use like this one is facing us but i kind of want one where there's more of a face more of an emotion kind of like these like these are good portraits of people and then as it's generating here i kind of see what it's turning out to look like and i already think it's going to look a lot better than these ones but I do like how the lighting looks on these. So I'm gonna copy some of this prompt and redo it where the astronaut is looking at us. So 
astronaut sitting in a studio facing the camera and smiling there is perfect lighting to illustrate the details of his suit okay so we're changing it up a little just so he's now facing us and with these other ones they're still facing off the side so we need to find a way to make it for sure that he's facing the camera now we can also reference certain image styles that would have people facing the camera so i could also imagine humans of new york style photograph of an astronaut facing the camera and smiling now if we're looking at the other generation you could already see that the astronaut standing in a studio facing the camera and smiling generation or render has these astronauts looking at us so already that's good we can use that um, it's not completely done yet but i think it's going to turn out good and also this one of humans of new york style astronaut is also turning out good too even though it's at 15 percent but we can already see that the structure of how it's building on is going to look right so this one just finished and as you see it's perfect they're looking at us they're smiling there's a friendly demeanor the light does kind of look like it's indoor but personally i think it's good enough to pass so Let's wait for the other one to come out, see which one we like more, and then we're gonna take one of these and then we're gonna start mashing it up. All right, so the Humans of New York style one just finished rendering, and I kinda like these, these are cool. We got an Asian brother in one of them. Um, I, might, I might just take him, because he fits in the uh, Himalayan theme. So I'm gonna upscale that one, the fourth image, and then potentially upscale one of these too, because this was in an a background that is easier to separate out because we really need to separate out the astronaut and put them into another photo so I'll use the second image and have an easy subject that you can isolate so now we have two images that we can use to isolate out okay so I have these two astronauts now we're gonna head back into the Himalayan background that we generated here and then we're gonna save one of these now which one do we think is the best now the fourth the first and the fourth one seems to have very himalayan style look to it and i think we could actually use that so i'm going to go with the fourth one i'll upscale the fourth one and the important part is that we just have the background and we could also do that with one of these as well although i do wish it was a bit more up close but we can definitely go with the first and second one here because there is a bit of a trail to it so i'll upscale the first one and then we'll keep these two. So we have one that has the subject already in it, and then we have the second one here, which is kind of a up close-ish shot of the Himalayan mountains that we can both use. So I'll save all of these images, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we are in Canva, and I think Canva is really easy to use if you don't have professional softwares. This is really powerful, and a lot of times I just use Canva myself even though I have access to other more powerful software. So the first step is to upload our image. So we're gonna use this one and I'm gonna use it in a new design. This way it has the size already done for me so I don't have to worry about any of the sizing stuff. And then here you go, pops up with this guy. And then the next part is to drag our subject into the image here. So I'm gonna drag this astronaut in and Canva has this powerful function that lets you edit the photos and remove the background. And I do have Canva Pro, so this gives me access to that. It's pretty affordable, so I'd highly recommend it. And then what we're gonna do now is just to drag this guy big enough so that he can replace the original subject that's in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of the beauty of Midjourney is Midjourney is just gonna see what's here and render off of that. So here we have our astronaut replacing the original guy in the back. Now, if you think this is good enough, sure, you could actually just go with this and have this photo be the one that you use for whatever your purpose is. But for our purpose, we want to make it a bit more clean. So we're gonna export this out and then we're going to bring it into Midjourney again. So I'm gonna download this and then we are back in Midjourney. Now, what we need to do is bring this image into Midjourney, upload it, and then you'll have a link that you can refer back. So here's the image uploaded and I'm gonna go and copy the link. Now the next option is to slash imagine and then here I'm gonna paste that so that they can refer back to this and I'm gonna say astronaut standing in the Himalayas. 
and then I'll add portrait of astronaut standing in the Himalayas. And then we're gonna let this render. Now there's also another way to put two of these images together and that is called using the blend function. So as this is rendering, we'll also try this out, the blend function. Essentially, you need to drag two images in and it will combine. So we do have an image of just the background and then an image of the astronaut. So I'll pull in the image of just the background and then I'll also pull in the image of just the astronaut. And then I'll let that render. So we just got our first image back and this is what we got an astronaut standing with Himalayas in the background. And this looks pretty clean. Like this is no weird background to it. And it has our dude from the original photo. Now I would like to see this in a wide scale. So I will just render it again and then make the aspect ratio 16 by nine. And then also with our other one here, I'll do it again in 16 by nine. So we'll use the blend option again and put in the two images. Okay, now this one is the one that we got from the photo bash. And then this one is the one that we got from using the blend function. Which one do you think looks better? So in conclusion, how it works is basically you take the concept of putting one photo, highlighting the subject in the main photo, and then bring it into another photo and combining those two elements. That way you have more control over what comes out. Sometimes you can use the blend function, but if you want more control over what comes out exactly to fit whatever you're trying to make, then a photo mashing technique would work better. If you enjoyed these, make sure you follow along and subscribe for more.